Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a get ready with me and I'm gonna be trying out a bunch of new products. I have a lot of stuff here. So I have the new Power Fabric Balm Foundation. I have the new concealer, both from Giorgio Armani. I have the Jouer Blush Palette. I have some goodies from Pixie, some glitter. I have by Terry. I have some new brushes from Royal and Lang Nickel. Oh my gosh, I have so much here. <laughs> I have the new Melt Highlighter. I have a plethora of new things that I need to show you guys, get on my face, and try out for the first time. So if you want to see how all these products work, just keep watching. I've got a brand new foundation from Giorgio Armani. It's the Power Fabric High Coverage Foundation Balm. So I initially thought that this was going to be a cushion foundation, but it's not. It does come with a little sponge doohickey. I'm not going to use that because I'm a rebel, but you open it up and this is what is inside. I got the shade 5 and when you touch it, it's very like creamy. But then when you rub it in, it goes to like a powder finish. So I'm definitely going to go in with a damp sponge. This is the Linda Hallberg sponge. This is my first time using this. I haven't even, other than touching it, I haven't played with it at all. The coverage looks nice. This is obviously going to be a first impressions, but if you guys want to see a full-on review, I will continue to test this and I can do that for you guys. Because I also got the new concealer. So far, that looks beautiful. And I don't have any primers on other than my typical Mac, ugh, yeah, MAC Skin Refine Zone and Timeless Smoothing Primer from Tarte. I do, however, have my Magic Cream on from Charlotte Tilbury because when I touched this and I felt how powdery it was, I was like, meh, I want to make sure my skin is super duper hydrated. And that Magic Cream just really does the work for me. So... That looks nice. So far, I'm liking this. And the color, number five, it looks pretty darn good. I think I accidentally got the wrong concealer shade, though. <laughs> we might be really bright under eyed again today. I really hope this doesn't go south because right now, this is looking really nice. I don't feel it on my skin. I like the texture of this. It's kind of like a satin. But I don't know. I hope it doesn't go downhill. <laughs> now I have the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric High Coverage Stretchable Concealer. And the shade I got through is number three. I feel like I meant to get a different shade. But we'll see. That blended out really effortlessly. I don't want to use a new powder underneath my eyes just because I want to know whether or not I actually like this concealer. So I'm going in with my typical Huda Beauty Baking Powder in the shade Pound Cake. I'm going to bake my nose and my chin with this as well. I have some new Omnia Professional brushes that were just sent to me, so I'm going to be using these throughout the video, and I'll just tell you what they are as I use them. I have not touched these yet, so I'm excited to play with them. All of these are synthetic. I was also sent over the setting powder from Beauty Bakery. It's their flower setting powder. So I'm going to use this, but I'm only going to use it on one side of my face. On this side, I'm going to use one of my typical powders. This is the La Mer Pressed Powder in Translucent to set my face. And, ooh, this brush is soft. This is the Omnia BOM 130. Again, it's the Pro line. I want to use a normal powder that I would use on a daily basis on one side just because I am testing out a new foundation. So I want to make sure that it's not the powder that I don't like or the foundation that I don't like. If I don't like some things, I can like tell which one is which. I got the excess off my brush, and now I'm going to go in with the Beauty Bakery powder on the other side of my face. Get powder everywhere. I am so messy with powders. I'm also going to use this brush to go ahead and dust away my bake. I always have to put on my lip balm. It's from Tatcha. 
All right, the last to get ready with me, I tried out the new Milani bronzer, which is the Sunlight Silky Matte Bronzing Powder. I had shade number two, I got shade number one. Uh, I already know that this isn't something that I'm going to continuously use because it has coconut oil in it. So that is, yeah, it's not good for acne prone skin and it does this does smell like coconut so if that bothers you it's most just like the um, butter bronzer I could not spit it out I know I like the formula of this and this color is definitely working for me better than the last one the other one was just a little it's like too cool tone this one's cool tone as well but it's not as I guess it's not as dark but the problem is coconut oil, I'm not going to keep putting that on my skin. But I told you guys I would show you what this color looked like. So I'm showing you and I'm going to compare it to my other bronzers that are cool toned as well. Oh, and this brush is the BOM 180. It's really soft. These brushes so far is really soft applying the bronzer really well not moving any of my makeup underneath moving on to blush I'm going to use this new blush palette from Jouer I want to go straight into adore me because I have this duo but I'm like no don't do it pick a different shade and I don't know what my eye look is going to be like today so I am going to go in with Marigold, this shade right here, and this is a BOM 110. Now for the fun part, highlighting, and I've got this new one from Melt that I was so excited about. This is Pink Moon, and unfortunately it is a little bit darker than what it looked like in the picture. I will have swatches of this as well as I'll probably swatch the bronzer against the the bomb bronzer <laughs> and I'll leave it at the end for some comparisons. But what I'm gonna do is kind of like what I did with the Fenty ones. So I'm gonna take this, this is a BOM 265. I'm gonna get this on my brush and I'm gonna go head back this way. So it's not too dark but definitely not something that I would use as a highlighter on my skin tone this is definitely going to be for someone who's a little bit darker than me and then the other option is even darker than this one but I'm going to make it work because I also have a pixie highlighter now with the BOM 430, I'm going to go in with this new one from Pixie. It is called the Glowy Powder in Creamy Gold. Take a little bit of this. I'm going to go right, yep, right there. Now I'm gonna buff using my Hourglass powder and a BOM 100, this real floppy, fluffy brush here. Now for the eyes, I have this palette from Pixie as well, and it's Hello LA Angel, but I'm also going to be using these little pressed glitters, and this is the shade Gold Lava. Second row, last shade. I wasn't really sent any blending brushes in my little kit, so I'm using a Zoeva 227. I'm starting on the outer corner and then working this up. Sorry, FedEx came, but I just basically took the shade all the way up into my transition area. Windshield wiper and circular motions. Same shade in a BOM 416. I'm going to run this right along my lower lash line. Same brush in the first shade in the third row. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to keep it lower. 
starting on the outer part of the eye and working it into the crease. Second row middle shade, and this is a BOM 46, but this is the Omnia Gold Natural Hairline. I'm put that on the outer corner. I'm not getting a whole lot of pigmentation out of this, to be honest. I'm just going to smoke this out just a little bit, and I'm probably going to have to go in with something else. And I got a little bit of fallout. MAC 242 and the copper shade. I'm going to place this basically all over the lid up to the crease and tapping over the last shade. Same shade on a BOM 435. I'm going to run that right along the lower lash line. BOM 601 in the first, sorry, last shade in the first row. I'm going to put that on the inner corner and also the brow arch. Now I'm going in with the glitter and that darkest maroon red shade. And I am just literally tapping this onto my eye with my finger, no adhesive or anything. I finished off the eyes with Milk Boss Liner on the top inner rim, but then I also used the new CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara. This was sent to me, and I'm going to show you guys me applying this. I did it to just one eye so that you guys could see the difference between the two, but this went on really well. Definitely lengthened my lashes and separated them at the same time, and you can see the difference between with mascara and without. But then on the lower lash line, as always, I went in with my MAC Extended Play Mascara. Now to finish off with the lips. I have three different options here. I think I've picked out the one that I'm going to use though. I have the new By Terry Lip Expert Shine Liquid Lipstick. You know what got me shine and liquid lipstick. When they put those two together, I'm going to purchase them. So I purchased two different colors. I purchased number 10, Bare Flirt. And that is what that one looks like right there. I'm not going to use that. And I also am not going to use this new Tom Ford Lip Lacquer Luxe in the matte formula. And it's Darling. I have not used this one yet. And I really want to. But I feel like with this orangey eye that this color is going to be better. I'm going to show you this just in case you want to see it. So again, this one's Darling. See it there, and then the color that I'm going to use is the one from By Terry, and this is number one, Baby Beige. And now this is the finished look. So I'm gonna go through each of the products and tell you my first impression thoughts. So the first item is the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric High Coverage Balm. This I am liking so far. I don't feel like I look dry. I feel like I got a lot of coverage out of it. And it has a nice feel to it. I don't feel like it feels heavy on my skin or anything like that. Definitely going to have to test this out and see how long it wears, wear again, and just get a feel for it. But first impressions, I like it. I like the color, I like the way it feels, everything so far. As for the concealer, again, I like the way it looks underneath my eyes. I feel like this is more of a medium coverage. I could apply more, but I don't want to. I think that this is 
a little lighter than what I particularly like, but it's not too light. Like I can use this color and feel comfortable with it. It's definitely brightening. I don't feel like I look dry or cakey or anything underneath my eyes. It's not heavy. So, so far, again, good first impression. So I'm liking how this is going. And then on one side of my face, I used my La Mer powder. And then on the other side, I used the Beauty Bakery Flower Powder. I almost said flower powder. <laughs> this one, I will say, I feel slightly more dry on this side but it's just slight and my cheeks are a little bit more dry right now. I do think it did a wonderful job. It didn't alter anything. It looks very smooth. I do think this is a good powder. I think it really smoothed out my skin. I think it would be great for baking. The Jouer Blush Palette, this is gorgeous. I think that this is beautiful. I wish they would have added one more, more corally tone instead of as many pinks as they did, but that's just me being nitpicky. I really like this formula. This shade down here is one of my all-time favorites, and I like the way that this one looks on my skin today. I think it's beautiful, and I'll just have to try out these other ones. This one right here definitely has a little bit of a sheen to it, and I think I'm gonna have to use this one as an eyeshadow. Work great on deeper complexions, but it's gonna be an eyeshadow for me. But just in general, I have liked Jouer's blushes, so I'm happy to have the palette. This is a big disappointment to me, the Pink Moon Highlight from Melt Cosmetics. It's just too dark. There are so many pictures of this that I couldn't tell if it was darker like this or if it was lighter like that. I'm gonna insert a picture that was one that I saw online and I was hoping it was gonna be more like that, more like my Dior Hollow Pink, something like that, but this is really dark and it's not necessarily a flattering shade on me. I like the Fenty one that I got recently. It's the pink one and I used it in my last video. I like that one more for the style that I would have to use this as. It's basically a blush topper and putting it further back. This color is just kind of dull on my skin tone, so I personally don't like it, but I can see this working on a richer complexion for sure. Again, you'd have to like that. It's almost like a purpley pink. It's not really pink, so I'm just disappointed in this. I wouldn't really, I don't know. The color of it is just kind of blase to me, so this is just a miss. On the other hand, the Pixi one, the Glowy Powder in Creamy Gold. This is stunning, and it is very creamy, like it says, and it is like bright. You can definitely up this. If I went in with a stiffer brush instead of the fluffier Royal and Lang Nickel brush, I definitely could have gotten this even higher. And I mean, the, don't get me wrong, the Royal and Lang Nickel brush did really well, but this could be extremely blinding. For the Pixie palette, this is, I forgot to mention, a face and eye palette. I like this, but I was a little lackluster with this brown. I definitely think it could have packed a little bit more pigment in there. I was able to build it up, but not really on the outer corners. I like, didn't want to grab, and I realized after the fact, because I said I didn't have a blending brush, that I used one of the blending brushes for my highlight, so <laughs> I could have totally used the BOM 430 to do the blending in my crease and transition area. It's a little too too big to do the inner work that I use my other Royal and Lang Nickel natural hair brush but anyway besides the point everything else in here worked really well I was really impressed with this shade right here that one went really nice I love this one here so really out of everything that I use it's just this shade and like when you swatch it it looks nice but I felt like I really had to build it up into the crease and it just did not want to adhere to the outer corner but still a decent palette and then these. This is promising. The only thing I don't like about this is the smell because it smells like it's like crayons, like it has gone bad, but it adheres to the eye by itself with your finger, which is really, really nice. Like I'm going to get another one of these. They can be messy, so keep that in mind, but I have nothing on my hand and you just press it in and it adheres and I can feel whatever is in it to hold and like you don't move around don't get me wrong but it still adheres to your skin and that's pretty awesome so I was happy with that I like the way it looks on my eyes I like the combo of the palette and the glitter together so I'm not mad at the palette I'm just mad at that brown shade and yeah I just feel like it could be better 
but the glitters, that's definitely a really good affordable option. This bronzer definitely worked better than the first one, but as I said, it has coconut oil in it, so I'm not going to use this. The texture of this is beautiful. It looks really nice on the skin. It's very smooth, and on the skin, I feel like it definitely reminds me of Oliver from The Bomb, so I will leave swatches of these two, as well as comparisons for Pink Moon after the video ends. I'll just leave them at the end. And then the CoverGirl mascara. I don't remember if I said it, so I'm gonna say it again. This was sent to me. I did not have high expectations for this, but oh my gosh. This is the first time I've used it today. The wand reminds me of the Lash Paradise wand, kind of like the Too Faced Better Than Sex one, but just a little bit smaller but the product is not too wet and not too dry. The Lash Paradise one, I felt like it was a little bit dry. This, I feel like I can just keep adding coats and it just, oh my gosh, it separates, it adds volume and it adds length. This is such a good mascara, like one that I can see myself continuously using. And I am somebody who uses mainly high-end mascaras, so this, I'm going to have to continue to use see if it flakes or anything, but I really, really like this. I think this is a bomb mascara. Now for the lips, this is not what I expected from this, but I'm not mad at it either. I was expecting more along the lines of like the Buxom Va Va Plump or whatever. This does not have a lot of pigmentation. It feels more like a vinyl gloss to me. Yeah, it's not, I wouldn't say it's sticky, but it's thicker. It doesn't feel like it's gonna move around my lips, but this is like a happy find. So it's in between like a vinyl gloss and a shiny liquid lipstick. I would not call this a shiny liquid lipstick because I feel like this isn't as pigmented as the liquid lipsticks have been, like even the Huda one, they just have more pigmentation to them. So these are more along the lines of something I would say, like run out the door. You don't want to gloss because you want a little bit more pigmentation and you want your lips to be a little bit more defined. So I like these, but they're not what I had anticipated, but I really like them at the same time. So I don't know if that makes sense. And then lastly for the brushes, I obviously didn't get to use all of them, but I have enjoyed every single one that I used. This one is super duper soft. It's a 130. So if you're looking for something to set your face, this would be great for bronzer as well. This one right here, the BOM 180, if you're looking for something to pick up those stiffer formulas of bronzer, this is going to be a good one. And then this one, if you are somebody who is looking for a more fluffy blush brush, I tend to like something a little bit more stiff, but like if you have something that is going to be too pigmented and you need it to go on a little bit lighter, this is a nice one, the 110 and this guy, I, I think I would like this better to set my face or to use for a different bronzer because for buffing, I didn't like it as much because it's too soft. Like this is very soft, which is not a bad thing. I like soft brushes, but for buffing, I like to have a little bit more stiffness out of it. But if you're looking to add powder, especially a loose translucent powder, you don't want to add too much. This type of brush that has this kind of flimsiness to it is going to do wonders for you. And then I really liked these for highlighting. I think I will end up using these more on my face than I will on my eyes, but then this brush right here is really great that I use underneath the lower lash line, as well as these two. I really can't complain about any of them, and I love the handles. They feel like uh, the NARS packaging. It's really nice that this is a great pencil brush. I was able to get right up in there, and this, if you have been trying to find something like the MAC 228, hold on, I'll get it. I have been trying to find something to replace this for the longest time because people ask me all the time, this is a perfect detail brush. And I hate using it on camera because I feel bad about it. But this right here is it. So this is the BOM 601. It is perfect for adding in the color on the inner corner and even on the brow arch. So if you were looking for something like the MAC 228, this one definitely does it. So anywho, that is it for my first impressions on everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.